on CCX News, one of the largest apartment complexes in the state in the final stages of being sold. What the potential sale of Brooklyn Park's Huntington Place apartments could mean for the city and for its tenants. It's no secret the Huntington Place Apartments had its share of issues, from crime and livability problems to financial challenges. Now the nonprofit owner of the complex has found a buyer, a for-profit investment company from out of state. But there's a big catch to a potential sale. The current owner, Aon, owes the city nearly $4 million in unpaid loans. Aon wants its debt to be forgiven. The big question for the city, should it allow the sale to go through and let Aon off the hook? And if it does, what would a sale mean for the future of the complex? According to city documents outlining the potential purchase, the new owner must keep an affordable housing agreement in place. The buyer's name has not yet been disclosed. The city's Economic Development Authority plans to discuss the potential sale at its next meeting. The Brooklyn Park City Council, meanwhile, is keeping one of its members under censure. Boyd Morrison has been censured twice, the most recent in April for violating the council's code of conduct and publicly criticizing city staff. This week, the council kept the censure in place, saying Morrison continues to criticize staff. The censure also says he's supposed to have limited contact with staff members. The council said he violated that by taking pictures of recreation staff and posting them to social media. These types of actions by council members um, impact staff morale, they impact recruitment, they impact retention of staff. We are not talking about fairness here. We're reviewing the censure of a council member who has shown absolutely no effort to resolve the behavior which resulted in the censure in the first place. Morrison said other council members aren't held to the same standard and called the discussion ridiculous. Members of a Golden Valley nonprofit are now on the ground in Florida, working to pick up the pieces after Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Minnesotan turned Floridian Candace Leitner is one of them. You drive down the main highway, which is 19, and everything looks normal, everything looks fine. But if you turn down one of these side streets, it's debris piled up everywhere, people sleeping in tents, um, people that have lived here for years and years and have lost everything. Headwaters staff and volunteers are connecting with the community to help tear down and eventually rebuild their longtime homes. They say their number one goal is to connect and stay connected. I think that's important because it gives you hope. And I think that I think people need that, you yeah. know, when you have lost everything, you need to hold on to something. And so it, it it's a lot. It means a lot to be a part of that. Yeah. You can help in the efforts by bringing donations to Headwaters Donation Drive next week. That's taking place at Amazing Alterations in Anoka from 10 until 6 on Wednesday, October 23rd. We'll have more details at ccxmedia.org. If you plan to get out on the highways this weekend, the State Patrol wants to remind people to move over or slow down. Well, it's important that people do move over and give all of our first responders, law enforcement, tow drivers, everybody uh, room to work safely to be able to get the job done uh, quickly and safely as possible. The third Saturday of October is known as National Move Over Day. The law, which originally passed in 2001, requires drivers to move one full lane away from an emergency vehicle stopped on the side of the road, as long as it's safe to do so. But last year, state lawmakers strengthened the law. Now drivers also have to move over for any vehicle stopped on the side of the road that has its hazard lights activated. I think it's very important that we did do that because we were having more motors being struck. Uh, an example is I remember a couple were uh, changing a tire and it was on the traffic side and they stepped back and then were struck by a car. A violation of the move over law could result in a $160 fine. A new Brooklyn Park restaurant plans to open soon. Sky Lounge and Bistro will take over the space that was previously Blue Wolf Brewing. Renovations are underway. The new venue says it wants to redefine the city's culinary narrative. It expects to open by the end of the year. Here's a way you can learn a skill that dates back to ancient civilizations. In Weekend Showcase, Dustin Scholl shows us how you can give archery a try at the Elm Creek Park Reserve. We're on the northwest end of Elm Creek Park Reserve. Nice shot. Specifically at the archery range. It's a, about a 30 acre space dedicated to archery. We have a main stationary range where we have targets set at various distances. 
and then it also includes a full loop walkthrough course. So we are going to be using today um, a universal compound bow. The compound bow was uh, invented in 1966. We're going to grab our arrow here, raise it up. I'm going to put my three fingers right below, drawing it back. Nice calm mind focusing on the target and then relaxing and releasing. I've been doing it since I was 10 years old. My uncle had one and I got a 25 pound bow when I was a kid and I've been shooting ever since. I just love hunting so I just keep practicing. So a lot of archers come out to get ready for the bow hunting season which is happening right now in Minnesota. And then if you're a beginner just trying to get into the sport of archery, you can come out here Looking good. with us, the Outdoor Recreation School and take a lesson or a program with us as well. Beginner lessons are $12 a person. Fall is really a, an awesome time to do it with the nice crisp temperatures and the beautiful scenery. Archery can be an investment. Knowing where to start can be tricky. Getting all of the equipment, knowing how to do it right. If you're really looking to gain a new hobby, try something new, or if you just want a fun activity with your friends and family, we're a great place to start with our programs. Focus on your shot. It's a great way to dive in the sport, get a feel for it, dip your toes in. You can see a, a significant improvement in just a two hour span. And it gets people itching to come back for more. And we'll have more details on how you can sign up for classes at ccxmedia.org. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media. Coming into the final week of the regular season, Maple Grove football was the lone unbeaten team in Class 6A. But could the top-ranked Crimson stay that way with a tough matchup against number three, Minnetonka? Former Maple Grove head coach and now Minnetonka defensive coordinator Matt Lombardi. Longtime Crimson assistant and first-year head coach Adam Spurl meeting before Thursday's game. Opening drive of the game for Tonka goes 80 yards and uses up almost eight minutes of the first quarter. Two-yard run by Caleb Francois and the skippers lead 7-0. Early second quarter, and this time Francois goes to the air and finds Vinnie May, and the speedy wide receiver does the rest. This play covers 70 yards for another touchdown. Minnetonka up 14-0 on Maple Grove. But late in the second quarter, the Crimson answer with two scores in the final two minutes. Both Caden Harney to Dylan Vocal touchdown passes, and it's 14 all at halftime. Third quarter, Harney rolls out and finds Vocal again. And the senior out races the Tonka defense to the end zone. Maple Grove has its first lead at 21-14. The Skippers tied the game early in the fourth, but the Crimson take the lead for good on this play. Francois pressured in the end zone by Will Raymond, and he fumbles. But was he down first? Referees confer safety or touchdown. It's a touchdown. Bo Dreheim on the recovery, and the Crimson lead 28-21. Following a Jack Weigel interception, Henry Seavers adds the finishing touches on with a 45-yard field goal. Maple Grove wins 31-21, heads into the section playoffs 8-0. The Osseo football team looked to win for the third time this season as they hosted White Bear Lake Thursday. Jay Wilcox has highlights. Osseo at home to face White Bear Lake in the regular season finale in football. Really Osseo were. gets on the board as Stephen Barson has hit Iggy Cooper for the touchdown lead in the first quarter. It's 7-0 Orioles after one. Really nice catch by Early in the Walker. second quarter, Cleary takes Cleary the handoff and has a nice He's seam to run through for the Bears. A 16-yard touchdown and it's 7-7. Osseo leads 10-7 at the half. In the third, Cleary bounces off a tackler and slips into the end zone as the Bears take the lead for the first time 14-10. Another Cleary TD nice makes it 21-10, but a big play here as Robert Pearson picks off the pass and returns it to the one-yard line before taking a big hit. It sets up a TD, and Osseo is within 21-17. And they almost take the lead. Philip Say blocks the punt, and it's scooped up by Lance Quia, who returns it for an apparent touchdown. 
But the return is negated by an Osseo penalty, and a White Bear Lake interception helps seal a 21-17 win for the Bears over Osseo. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. After a state runner-up finish last season, the Whitehead Girls soccer team looked to return to the state class 3A tournament. Chaz Moots has highlights from the Section 6 final. Wyzetta trying to punch their ticket to state for a fourth straight year. Washburn trying to get back to state for the first time since 2016. No scoring in the first half with the Trojans get going early in the second. Lauren Craig centering pass. Sarah Hyde comes crashing in for the header. Great execution by the Trojans to put them up 1-0. 50th minute, Tenley Sendon takes it herself. Left foot keeps it low and in. The senior makes it 2-0 for Wyzetta. After that, the floodgates really got rolling. Send in again on a free kick. The Minnesota Gopher commit bends it in, makes it look easy. It was that senior duo of Sendin and Hyde all afternoon. Hyde is committed to Creighton. She gets a nice corner from Craig and puts it away. A big second half gives Wyzetta a 4-1 win and another Section 5 3A championship. I feel like towards the end of the half, we did have a lot of momentum, lots of shots, lots of opportunities. So kind of just opening up in the second half, we just kind of scored right away and finished it off. Today's first half is a little shaky, but leading up to then, we've been really solid. We've had a few shutouts in a row, and we've been scoring like five, six goals each game. So that's really helped like rally our confidence and get us going into playoffs and into state. In Plymouth, Chaz Moots, CCX Sports.